we move on to discuss permutation equivariance of graph neural networks. We will show that GNNs inherit the permutation equivariance of graph filters. We consider GNNs with single features. The extension of the analysis to multiple features is straightforward. Start by recalling the definition of a GNN with L layers. This is an architecture that consists of L layers that recursively process outputs from previous layers. Each layer is made up of a perceptron, which is the composition of a pointwise nonlinearity with a graph filter with coefficients hk. The output of the GNN is the output of layer L. It is a function of the input signal, the shift operator, and the filter tensor calligraphic H which groups all of the filter coefficients used at each layer. We use phi to denote the GNN operator. We consider here the result of running the GNN defined by the filter tensor H on the signal X supported on S and on the permuted signal X hat supported on the consistently permuted shift S hat. That is, the permuted signal is P transpose X and the permuted shift is P transpose SP. To be clear, we want to understand the relationship between the output of the GNN operator phi that uses the filter tensor H, takes the signal X as an input, and instantiates the filters of each layer on the shift operator S. And the output of the GNN operator phi that uses the same filter tensor H but takes as input the permuted signal X hat and instantiates the filters on the permuted shift operator S hat. The relationship between these outputs is stated by the permutation equivariance theorem of graph neural networks. Consider graph signal X supported on shift operator S and its permuted version X hat supported on shift operator S hat. It then holds that the output of the GNN phi that uses filter tensor H and runs on the permuted signal X hat and permuted shift operator S hat is the corresponding permutation of the output of the GNN phi that uses the same filter tensor H and runs on the original non-permuted signal X and the original non-permuted shift operator S. This is the same theorem that holds for graph filters but restated for GNNs. Its implication is the analogous. Running a GNN after we permute the input and the shift is equivalent to first running the GNN and permuting the output afterwards. The theorem holds because we know that filters are equivalent to permutations, and since the nonlinearities are pointwise, there is nothing they can do to alter the equivariance of the filters. To formalize this argument, recall that we are running two separate GNNs. At layer L of the one that runs on shift operator S, we have the output XL written as a perceptron applied to the signal XL-1. This perceptron combines the pointwise nonlinearity sigma and the graph filter HL of S. In layer L of the GNN that runs on shift operator S hat, we have the output XL hat written as a perceptron applied to the signal X hat L-1. This perceptron combines pointwise nonlinearity sigma with the graph filter HL of S hat. The graph filter has the same coefficients. Proceed now to make the induction hypothesis that at layer L, the inputs are permutations of each other, related by P transpose. Write down the output of layer L on the GNN that uses shift operator S hat. The perceptron involves the filter HL of S hat applied to signal X hat L minus 1. Given that the filter is permutation equivariant, which we have proven before, 
and that we are assuming by induction hypothesis that the inputs are permutations of each other, it follows that the output of this filter can be written as a permutation of the output of the filter HL of S applied to signal XL minus 1. We have switched to the other GNN. Furthermore, given that the nonlinearity is pointwise, the permutation matrix that is currently applied before the nonlinearity can be applied after the nonlinearity is taken. We can now identify that we are left with a permutation of the output of the perceptron that characterizes the layer L output of the GNN that runs with shift operator S. We have proven that layer L is permutation equivariant. More importantly, for the purposes of a formal proof, is that we have completed an induction step. We have proven that if the inputs to layer L are related by a permutation P transpose, their outputs are related by P transpose as well. But this output is the input to layer L plus 1. Thus, inputs to layer L plus 1 are related by permutation P transpose if the inputs to layer L are related by permutation P transpose. To complete an induction proof, notice that at layer 1 we have x hat equal to P transpose times P. This is the hypothesis of the theorem. The induction is now complete and the proof is done. Graph neural networks, same as graph filters, perform label independent processing. This is because the nonlinear function acts separately on each component. The implication is the exact same implication we discussed for graph filters. If we consider the signal on the right and a consistent permutation of the signal and the shift, all we have done is change the labels of the nodes. Thus, we require the processing to be impervious to this change. Whatever transformation happens on the non-permuted signal on the left should be replicated on the right. GNNs, same as graph filters, fulfill this request. This is what the equivariance theorem proves. Another implication of permutation equivariance, which also holds for both graph filters and GNNs, is the exploitation of symmetries in graphs and graph signals. We have discussed this at an intuitive level, but we can now state it formally. A graph symmetry exists when the graph can be permuted onto itself. Some graphs are invariant under the action of a given permutation. This means it is possible to rewrite S as P transpose SP for some permutation P. This is what we show in these two figures. The graphs are drawn to be literally the same, but we have applied a permutation that implements a specular symmetry that moves node 9 into node 12, node 6 into node 3, and so on. If we apply the equivariance theorem to this particular case, we know that a permutation of the shift and the signal applied at the input of the GNN is the same as a permutation of the signal and the shift applied at the output of the GNN. But we also know that the shift permutation is moot because the shift operator is being permuted onto itself. We have therefore shown that when a graph is symmetric, the GNN output associated with a permutation of the input X is equal to a permutation of the output of the GNN, but without permuting the shift which we don't have to permute because it is symmetric. We can therefore claim that a GNN learns to process the permuted signal P transpose X supported on S from learning the processing of the non-permuted signal X, which is also supported on X. This effectively multiplies the size of the dataset because the signal X is doubling for the signal P transpose X and for any other signal that has the same symmetry, of course. 
an important point to make is that perfect symmetries are rare. Regular graphs are nice abstractions, but they do not appear often in practice. But we do have situations where graphs are close to being symmetric, as we illustrate here. The graph is a perturbed version of a permutation of itself. Thus, there is no interest in exploiting perfect symmetries, but there is interest in exploiting quasi-symmetries. If this were a recommendation system, our user similarity networks are not identical, but some of us will have user similarity networks that are close. The ability to exploit quasi-symmetries hinges on our ability to establish a stability to deformations, so that we have approximate equivariance when we have graphs that are close to the permutations of each other, instead of perfect permutations of each other. This brings us to the notion of operator distance modulo permutation to measure how far operators are to being permutation equivariant. Consider then, given operators C and C hat, the operator distance modulo permutation between C and C hat is defined as the minimum over permutations of the maximum of R vectors x with unit norm of the norm of the difference between P transpose times C applied to x and C hat applied to P transpose x. This definition is a variation of the operator norm in which on top of comparing the action of the operator on different unit norm vectors, we also search for the permutation matrix that makes the operators as close to each other as possible. The operator distance modulo permutation permits rewriting our equivariance theorems. For the case of graph filters, we can restate the theorem as claiming that if the distance modulo permutation of S and S hat is zero, then the distance modulo permutation of H of S hat and H of S must be zero as well. Likewise, the equivariance theorem of GNNs can be restated as claiming that if the distance modulo permutation of S hat and S is zero, then the distance modulo permutation of the GNN operators phi that run on graph S and S hat with the same tensor must be zero too. What happens now when the distance modulo permutation of S hat and S is a small but not zero? Namely, when S and S hat are not permutations of each other, but they are close to permutations of each other. This is the problem we study under the banner of stability properties of graph filters and GNN.